Hello everyone, uh, my name is David Garcia. I've been uploading some videos about finite element analysis applied to specific engineering problems. This time I want to share with your channel uh, Simulaciones Finitas, where we will post CFD simulations, FEM simulations by now, and all related to integrity assessment. We hope you help us grow and you like this channel. So uh, the video for today is about this paper where they do a numerical analysis and experimental validation for a pipeline of one meter of diameter subject to blast loads. Uh, in this pipeline we have uh, two thicknesses 1.4 centimeters and 2.4 uh, centimeters. Um, there are several explosive charges uh, for the same uh, geometry. So uh, we have uh, TNT charges which varies from 0.2 kilograms to 10 kilograms. We will see how to solve, uh, from a general perspective, this kind of problem. As you can see here, there will be three charges with uh, 0.6 kilograms, 3 kilograms, and 5 kilograms. Our goal is to show you the benefits of using this tool to simulate these kind of problems, which are highly complex because of several factors like non-linearities in the material, the speed of uh, the loading, the strain rate, um, and many more. And being capable of answering certainly which is the failure mode expected for those materials, for that physics, uh, which is highly complex. At the end of this video, we will do a little exercise comparing, comparing two ch changes. One is increasing the thickness to three inches, which is exaggerated because you won't find that easily with a supplier. And this is done to see how the failure mode changes. The second change uh, consists in an upgrading of the material moving from 70 KSI uh, to 100 KSI gel strength. So we hope you stay at the very end of this video, uh, give us a feedback, a like if you want, and subscribe. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you for staying here. To define the geometry, we work with the diameter and thicknesses mentioned earlier. For the TNT charge, there are mainly two factors. The contact area and its density because they allowed us to define the volume that we need to draw. In the geometry, we need to define any symmetry if applies, like this one, and any area of interest where I will refine the mesh in the future, for example, near the explosion load, in order to be computationally less expensive. We will neglect the air effect in this simulation. To define the materials, we need to define first the framework. In this case, the simulations were done with explicit dynamics, because its solvers properly addresses this kind of physics. Here we have the engineering data, which allowed us to define the constitutive model of the material. For example, for the pipeline, we work with Johnson's Cook model, which best describes the plasticity of the material at high strain rates. This is an experimental model, which means that someone took the time to identify in a lab the behavior and define these parameters. We also need to define some shock parameters as well, to properly address the thermodynamics relationship of the material, for example density, pressure, velocities. And finally, we need to define the failure criteria, or failure equations of the material, which is both based on Junsaku model and experimental model. This criteria defines the plastic deformation as the starting point from which the elements erode. In other words, if this is a mesh and I apply a load here, here, and the mesh suffers plastic strain, 
When this string exceeds this reference value, the element erodes or goes off. This is what is called erosion control. To define the TNT material, we used the default features for engineering data. With all these well defined, we can continue with our simulation. Before applying loads and define the mesh in this problem, I want to show you how to define the materials in Workbench first. So the TNT load is selected as Alerian reference here in geometry. So again, click on Alerian behavior. And the assignment of the material is TNT, as we defined it earlier. The remaining material corresponds to the pipe, which is a Lagrangian reference. And the properties were already defined. Now we can continue with the loading conditions and definitions of the mesh for those three simulations. In these simulations of 0.6 kilograms of TNT, we have a symmetry phase with the red color here. These conditions tells the solver that we have pipe at the other side. That's the assumption for the solver. Here we have a zero displacement uh, constraint at the base. And there is something called detonation point. In simple terms, it tells us where the detonation begins geometrically. Now, to define the mesh, it has to be fine enough to consider the physical phenomenon through its thickness. For this particular case, we use 12 elements through the thickness. The previous conditions are quite similar for the 3 kilograms load and 5 kilograms load. Here we ain't have symmetry, because in this case we simulated in the mid plane of the pipe, so there is no symmetry plane, it's suppressed. Here we have same detonation point, same displacement constraint, and if we see the mesh, we'll see a fine mesh as I told you earlier. Same case for the 5 kilogram load. The only different thing here from previous settings, and we did it that way on purpose to see how the results differentiate from one another, is that there is no symmetry plane. With its assigned detonation point and displacement constraint at the base, there is something to add about the meshing, and it is that for this particular case, the mesh between the TNT load and the pipe are in contact, as you can see here. And that is something different from the previous two simulations, as you can see. Uh, and there is a gap here, for example. So we can see how those results are different from each other. With that on mind, we can see the results obtained from these settings. We are going to compare at first glance the results for the lowest TNT load. This graph corresponds to the outside surface displacement. It means displacement from the outside diameter and its inner diameter. This region that you see here is obtained from our simulation and it shows the displacement from a range between 3.5 centimeters to 5.3 centimeters, whose values are similar to the ones in the publication. On the other hand, the plastic strains and the failure modes both match the results from the publication. This value of 6 uh, centimeters belongs to the small particles whose displacement is too long. Now, for the 3 kilograms explosive simulation, we can see how the pressure profiles match the behavior from the original paper. Even though there are differences in the values, but the overall behavior is the same, and, and so it does the strain. 
as we can see it here. This plastic strain is similar considering the cracks at the edges, the shape of displacement and the failure mode. Last but not least, for our 5 kg simulation, we can see the entire detachment from the pipe. And with this, we can see the advantages of using a high-tech tool like ANSYS to simulate complex physics, like a blast load. Finally, we will see two additional simulations that were not part of the original publication. The first one related to an increase in the yield strength of the material, specifically 100 KSI. Uh, here we can see how the failure mode behaves plastically. And if we do a top view, uh, we can see the tearing of the material, the cracks path, and the section detachment. Lastly, uh, we have the simulation re related to a thick pipe. 3 inches of thickness. Uh, this pipe that we see here and this line is the first state of cracking of the pipeline at longitudinal axis. This screen chart at the right shows us a more advanced state of failure from the same pipe where we see a cracking, bridge of fracture and some elements eroded at the center where the highest stresses are found because of the triaxial stress state, right? And this is it. This is all we wanted to, to share with you. Thank you for staying to the very last moments. Uh, next time we will post two additional videos. One, um, it's uh, related to storage tanks. This one. Uh, these tanks are subject to seismic loads. And the other one is an elbow with an erosion process. Again, thank you very much for, for staying here. Uh, I hope you have liked it. Leave your comments below. Uh, which simulations would you like to see? We will see you shortly. Bye.